Welcome back to All on Law. This is a medical video lecture, internal medicine or surgery. And today we're going to talk about a very important topic for USMLE or any other medical board examination that's diffuse. esophageal spasm okay also known as DEF right guys so diffuse esophageal spasm so before starting a discussion on this I would like to tell you the esophageal spasm let me write ES to save your time. The esophageal spasm can be of three types. One is the diffuse esophageal spasm. And second, it could be a hypertensive, hypertensive spasm. And third, this hypertensive, remember, it's also known as nutcracker esophagus. Esophagus. Okay, nutcracker esophagus. And the hypertensive spasm. And we have another one that's known as jackhammer esophagus. jackhammer esophagus so esophageal spasm we're gonna have three types that's uh, diffuse esophageal spasm hypertensive spasm that's also known as nutcracker spasm and jackhammer spasm okay or jackhammer esophagus right so to define diffuse esophageal spasm before defining this I would like to brief you with the hypertensive spasm and jackhammer esophagus the hypertensive spasm these what you call when the contractions proceed in a what you call in a coordinated manner okay remember the the uh, the contraction in hypertensive spasm they are in a coordinated manner but the amplitude is high okay the amplitude is high whereas in what you call jackhammer esophagus the contractions are of very very high amplitude but and the most important point in this jackhammer esophagus is it involves the majority of the esophagus and the duration of the contraction is prolonged that's why it's known as a jackhammer esophagus got it guys excellent now let's move on to the most important topic what we are going to discuss today is the des diffuse esophageal spasm so you know the esophagus right and this is a tongue this is a tongue and this is a jaw right so this is the esophagus that connects oral cavity to the stomach right and remember the bolus from oral cavity to what you call it has to reach what you call uh, stomach and it reaches in 10 less than 10 seconds less than 10 seconds so this is the function of this and this esophagus has what you call the muscles the circular muscles that is inner circular inner circular muscles and outer longitudinal muscles that helps in the contraction and the movement what you call a peristalsis and helps in the what you call um, progress of the uh, what you call the bolus into the stomach right so inner circular and outer longitudinal muscles this esophagus has a three zones known as the upper zone okay the middle zone and the lower zone The upper zone consists of striated muscles only. 
that's cricopharyngeal muscle the middle zone contains the striated muscles and the smooth muscles whereas in a lower, lower zone it consists of lower esophageal spasm you know very well that connects that's like what you call uh, it connects the esophagus and the stomach right and there is a pressure that's really very important and that's the reason uh, the patient will have what you call regurgitation because of that and the pressure is around 15 to 25 millimeter of mercury 15 to 25 millimeter of mercury right guys so if there is any change in the pressure or les is not working properly the abdominal the, the, the whatever food is present in the stomach it can regurgitate into the esophagus and the ph of the uh, what you call food in the stomach is really very high means they are more acidic they go and damage what you call esophagus uh, mucosa and thus results in the symptoms of regurgitation and they can lead to asthma in future also and there are so many problems associated with that right guys so this is regarding a brief what you call information about the esophagus so let's talk about what are the causes what causes what you call des that's a diffuse esophageal spasm there is an increase in acetylcholine and this acetylcholine you know is a parasympathetic mimetic it in causes a contraction right there is a one thing but there are two other theories one is the gastric reflux might be causing what you call des or a primary nerve or motor nerve or motor what you call nerve disorder primary nerve or motor disorder right excellent so remember unlike the achalasia which we're gonna upload a new video on that this condition has a normal sphinx sphincteric relaxation and this what you call may be associated with gastroesophageal reflux in what you call in achalasia the sphincter relaxation is abnormal here it's a normal okay now let's talk about the clinical features or the presentation what the what are the symptoms? The most important symptom is the chest pain. The chest pain. The characteristics of this chest pain is, is similar to what you call angina. So it confuses us whether the patient is having what you call the chest pain due to diffuse esophageal spasm or it's due to the MI or angina. Right? So in USMLA examination, you have to look for other causes also. Remember, if the patient has a chest pain which radiates to the back, neck, ear, jaw or arms may be confused with, as I said, angina pectoris. So one point that you should always look in USMLA examination that the whether the patient was take any history of very hot or cold or drinks okay or food long what you call loud noise stress if these things are present in the history then it could be diffuse esophageal spasm because these very hot food very cold food loud noise stress they want they exacerbate dysphagia from what you call esophageal spasm by stimulating the muscular contraction these things go and stimulate the muscular contraction and results in the diffuse esophageal spasm. If this is present in the history, then think of diffuse esophageal spasm and this, these points are really very important. Okay guys? And remember, not only chest pain, they can have what you call globus. What's a globus? It's a sensation that object is stuck in his throat. Okay, they can have another symptoms that is it due to regurgitation, symptoms of regurgitation. They can have depression. Try to look for this history of depression in him or her. Try to look for a history of anxiety. It's associated with these. That's why TCA, tricyclic antidepressants, are very useful in case of diffuse esophageal spasm. They really help in these patients especially the imipramine, right? Later we'll discuss about the treatment part. 
The depression, anxiety, and the psycho psychiatric symptoms can be associated with this disease. So, in your assembly, if you want, if you see a chest pain, then think if you want to rule out what you call diffuse esophageal spasm. Look at his what you, look at the history of when very hot, cold food intake, or a loud noise, or a stress is there, or any kind of depression, anxiety, globus. Okay, then you can what you call catch the diagnosis. Right, guys. So let's move on to what you call the diagnosis. How do you diagnose? The best and the gold standard test. Which is the best and the gold standard test. What we call is manometry. Manometry. Right? Manometry. It reveals what you call the contractions of high amplitude. Okay, and in the DES, diffuse esophageal spasm, the contractions, what you call when the contractions with the contractions with normal or very high amplitude, but they are uncoordinated, they are simultaneous and rapidly propagate you. Okay, but remember there is a normal sphincteric response to the swallowing. Okay, and this is a really very important point, and that helps you. To differentiate it from other type of what you call uh, uh, esophageal spasm and even from achalasia also. There is a classic definition that for diffuse esophageal spasm on a manometry that if there are more than what you call two uncoordinated, more than two uncoordinated, two uncoordinated contractions. Are present during ten consecutive, ten consecutive or ten consecutive wet swallows. Okay. The classic definition is more than two uncoordinated contractions during ten consecutive wet swallows. Okay. And at least one peristaltic contraction must be present. So no need to go in detail, but remember this. This is going to be really very helpful because in your SMLE, they can give you what you call um, the, the manometric finding and ask you the diagnosis. Or either they can give you the history and ask you the diagnosis. Or either they can give you the history and ask you the, which is the next best step. Okay. You can take radiographs. They are normal in one half of the cases, but may reveal... Uh, diverticular segmental spasm or corkscrew appearance of the esophagus. That's really very important. Corkscrew. Corkscrew appearance. Okay. And you just Google the images, corkscrew appearance. You can see plenty of radiological images on Google. Okay, guys. Now let's move on to the what you call the treatment part. How do you manage? The medically, it can be managed with, okay, calcium channel blockers, okay, calcium channel blockers. Then we have what you call nitrites, nitrites, okay, TCA, especially imipramine, imipramine. Then we have sildenafil. Then botulinum toxin. Botulinum toxin prevents the release of acetylcholine and prevents the attachment of acetylcholine to the nerve endings. Okay. And dilatation. But sildenafil is a phosphodiesterase inhibitor, right? Yes. So it helps in the smooth muscle relaxation. So this is how me medical treatment helps in uh, treating the diffuse esophageal spasm. Okay. Regarding the surgery, surgery is moderately effective with the good results obtained in one, what you call over two thirds of the patients. Okay. And the, if you want to know the best results, they are obtained in what you call emotionally stable patients with severe disease and without associated lower gastrointestinal problems. Right, guys? 
So surgery consists of a long, what you call, let me write here, it consists of long esophago myotomy, okay, that extends from arch of what you call aorta to the just below the LES. But just remember the what you call a type of procedure, what we're going to do, okay. But you have to take care of LES. That's really very important. Okay, guys. Right, guys. So if it's a severe, then we can do what you call uh, if there is a significant gastroesophageal reflux is present, then anti-reflux procedure is performed. Anti-reflux procedure is performed. Okay, guys. So thank you so much for watching this video. I'm sure you're going out with some information over here and remember one thing I forgot to say tell you that diffuse esophageal spasm is more common in whites than blacks more common in females than males and it's not common in children but as the age increases the chances of having this disease increases thank you so much for watching this video take care please do not forget to thumb up please do not forget to share please do not forget to subscribe thank you so much take care